evening and welcome to the Discoveries Science Cast. I'm Cassie Wilson and with me is President and CEO of the Discovery, Matt Sinclair. Hey Matt. Hey Cassie. It's great to be here with you and thanks to everyone at home for tuning in to ScienceCast. Now, we have an incredible show for you this evening. It's going to include entertainment from local performers, eye-boggling science demonstrations, plus, you know, it's just all in the name of science. Folks, right now, more than ever, the Discovery needs your help. And you can do that by generously making a contribution to the Discovery today during this program. You can use our text to donate feature brought to you by Microsoft by texting the Discovery to 44321. Go to the Discovery's webpage at nvdm.org or call us at 775-786-1000 to pledge today and help us reach our goal to raise $100,000 for the Discovery. As a bonus, we've put together an exciting auction brought to you by the wonderful people at Cook Elevator. You can find that auction at the site listed below, so don't delay and check out all the amazing items we have to bid on. We hope you stay right here with us through this wondrous journey of science and fun. And although we realize times are tough right now, we want everyone to stay positive, just like a proton, Cassie. Oh dear, I see those science jokes are already off to the races, but I've got one for you. Hey Matt, why did the scientist remove her doorbell? I've got no idea. Well, she wanted to win the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Okay, I see you came prepared with some science jokes. That's great. Did you know, Cassie, that the Discovery actually started its journey in 2004 when founding board members had the vision to bring the museum to this fantastic community? Through a tremendous amount of hard work and the philanthropic generosity of so many, the Discovery opened its doors in 2011. In that time, we're proud to say that the museum has welcomed and inspired more than 1.3 million visitors. So, if my math is correct, that means we'll be celebrating our 10-year anniversary of the Discovery starting right now tonight and all the way through 2021. I can't believe it's already been 10 years uh, since the museum opened its doors, Matt. I can hardly believe it myself. And to kick off the 10-year celebration, we've added five 10-year memberships up for grabs in the silent auction. Don't miss your opportunity to become a member of the Discovery for the next 10 years. 10 years of science and inspiration. And we hope to keep the Discovery around for many, many years to come. Well, without further ado, let's go see what Discovery Camp Manager and Science Guru Kevin has in store for us in his science lab. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Cassie. Hi, Matt. And everyone at home, welcome. My name is Kevin, and today we have a really cool science experiment lined up for you guys. What I have here, it's a very simple trash can that I've cut a hole at the bottom and just a shower curtain. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some fog in here, we're gonna launch this puppy up, and we're gonna get some pretty cool toroidal vortices. Here we go. All right, guys, so the count of three. One, two, three. Another amazing fact about these toroidal vortices is their ability to transfer energy really long distances. I have Miranda there, and I'm gonna try and take that red cup out of her hair. So here we go. And there you have it, guys, toroidal vortices. Wow, that was incredible. And remember, 100% of your donations help bring science demonstrations like that one here to the Discovery, as well as new exhibits and programming, so you and your family can enjoy the museum for years to come. Now, as a local and independent nonprofit, the Discovery relies on the generosity of our community. So don't delay. Support science right here in Reno. I think we can all agree that the Discovery has a big impact on the families that come and visit the museum. Take a look. <laughs> um, Discovery's been an amazing place for our boys to get exposed to new ideas, make friends, and have fun exploring the, the world around them. The Discovery Museum has been a very positive thing for my or family. Both my kids have been part of the summer camp. They've been thriving on it. They love the hands-on aspects of it. And they've also had birthday parties here as well. And it, it's just been wonderful just to see them thrive and learn and be part of the Discovery Museum family. They have participated in the Discovery Camp even since they were like six years old, first graders. They are learning and having fun at the same time. They are doing amazing. They are always looking forward to be signed up with the Discovery Camps. 
The Discovery Museum is an amazing community resource. It allows uh, kids from all over the region to explore hands-on science. I just have a lot of fun here. It's very different from other museums that I've been to. In other museums, like, we can only look and we can't interact with it. And even if we try to, somebody would be like, hey, don't touch that, it's not allowed. But here we get to have like hands-on experience. This place really helps people discover, as the name says. It's those stories and impacts that keep us pursuing our mission to inspire through hands-on science. I can't wait to make and share more inspirational stories that are so deeply rooted with the discovery. That's why I'm so pleased to share with you a special sneak peek of the new Nevada Gallery coming to the Discovery soon. So let's dive in and have some fun. The new Nevada exhibit is a journey through the great and vast state that we call home. Not only will the exhibit allow you to take in all the interactive wonders of Lake Tahoe, but it will also allow you to be a field researcher and even look through the eyes of a predator or prey. This world-class exhibit will be sure to impress both locals and those who are curious to learn more about this wonderful land we call home. To learn more about the Nevada Gallery, please contact any of the amazing folks in our development department. But to do that, the Discovery needs help from you. Everyone at home, you can support the Discovery today by donating any amount. You'd be amazed at how far just a few dollars can go. So don't discount the value of your donation. Make that pledge today. And don't forget about that silent auction. It's going on right now, brought to you by Cook Elevator. We have some amazing items that have been generously donated by members of this community. So have some fun while supporting science. Now let's check in with the one, the only, the amazing, the incredible, Justin Impossible. A lot of people ask me, they say, Justin, you know, your magic shop's closed. Uh, how do you get all your decks of cards? Actually being a magician, it's a lot of fun. I actually make my own playing cards and you can too. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, when you're a magician, you actually get to visit the US playing card company in Kentucky which is kind of a unique experience when they make playing cards. And uh, they give you something kind of cool, which is what's in here. Now, before we do that, let's just uh, get a card selected. And let's see what we got here. We have the uh, tennis spades. We'll roll with that. And uh, when you uh, visit the uh, US playing card company as a magician, they give you these cards. And uh, they're just blank playing cards, but they actually have a special solution on them. See, this would be where the faces are. And uh, this is what actually the backs would be of the playing card, and those are the backs, right? And so let's just take a couple of these playing cards. We'll take one, two, three, we'll take four, and we'll take uh, one, two, three, we'll take four, there. Now if you were here, you'd actually be able to feel that uh, special solution on the back of the playing card and on the faces of these blank playing cards. Now we have the uh, ten of spades here. Let's actually, actually do the back first. We just take the back, just like so. you can actually start to print your own playing cards, which is kind of cool. Now that's the back. You can also get the face of a playing card, just like so. But if you notice, that's a mirror image of a mirror image. So if I wanted a normal playing card, I have to take the mirror image to get another mirror image. <laughs> Don't worry, it's, it's a little bit confusing, but if we just take that mirror image, we should be able to get a normal 10 of spades. Now, if you want, this is kind of fun, just take the back of one playing card, and take the face of one, and if you do it fast enough, you should be able to get, which is called a double, just like so. Now, you don't have to do a full playing card. You can actually just rip just a piece off. Now, if you do this at home, you do have to be careful. You don't want to go too fit. Oh, shoot. But once it actually dries, it uh, dries for life. Now, this is kind of fun. Just take a playing card, give it a nice little spin. You notice the pips will actually start to spin, which is kind of fun. And this is actually my favorite. Just take the playing card, give it a little knock and those pips will actually come down to the side, just like so. And that's how I actually make my own playing cards during COVID. Isn't he fantastic? And the best part is he's coming back in a little bit to show you how to perform a trick right in your own home. But before that, let's hear a few more words from some of the local supporters of the Discovery. Hey, Northern Nevada, Wolfpack head football coach, Gene Norvell here, encouraging you to donate to the discovery and support science and diversity in our community. Go Discovery and go Wolfpack. Since 2011, the discovery has contributed to the cultural and economic growth of our community through its educational programming. It is the home for informal science, technology, engineering, art, and math learning 
for thousands of families across northern Nevada. It encourages us to be curious and learn more, and at a time when we need science now more than ever. Museum centers like the Discovery play an important role in inspiring the bright young minds of tomorrow that will help us solve the challenges that we face. So thank you for supporting important partners like the Discovery. Museums like these are a vital educational resource for our community. Who knows, the next great scientist could be one of you at home. You know, one of my favorite memories as a kid growing up in Reno was our annual summer trip to the Exploratorium in San Francisco. Of course, we never got to see everything we wanted to see, and the visit always ended too soon. Having a science center right here in Reno gives my kids the opportunity I missed, getting to spend as much time as they want exploring and discovering how the world works, and being able to come back again and again while learning something new each time. Every parent has the power of the internet in their pocket, giving us the ability to answer any kid's question within seconds. But there's a powerful difference between reading your child a blurb from your phone and helping your child discover the answers for themselves. The Discovery offers our children that opportunity, and I'm proud to not only support the Discovery as a member, but to also help shape the Discovery's future as a member of the board. Please donate now and support science. My family joined the Discovery as members the first year it opened. We loved bringing our daughter and her friends to a fun, safe, educational environment and our parents enjoyed bringing their granddaughter to the Discovery too. Just like Austin, I believed in the mission of the Discovery so strongly that I joined the board of directors back in 2015. It was clear to me that the Discovery was helping to reshape downtown Reno. It brought families to Midtown and opened access to hands-on science education to everyone. The Discovery is a place of inclusion and accessibility in our community. Last year, through financial assistance programs, more than 66,000 visitors were able to enjoy the Discovery regardless of their ability to pay. During a typical year, more than 16,000 students visit the Discovery during school field trips with many of those students representing Title I schools. And the Discovery's good stewardship of limited resources doesn't stop there. The Discovery is also supported by 200 volunteers who donate more than 9,000 hours of their time each year just because they believe in the Discovery's mission. Those are incredible numbers for an organization that is making a lasting impact on this community. If you can donate today, right now, please do so. You are making an investment in a beautiful downtown with safe and educational activities, a place where grandparents and grandkids can learn together, and a place that welcomes everyone to discover science. All right, Austin, look at all this cool stuff for your girls. Oh, look at that. Look at oh that. my gosh, they have to have one of these. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, Thanks. and a train. Oh, I know they want one of they're those. They're gonna like this, yeah. It's so great to hear those words from local supporters and to know just how important science education is, as well as the positive impact the discovery has on our community. All right, I'm just getting word we've got our next experiment totally lined up. So let's check in with science educator, Miranda. Hey, Discovery fans. I'm here in the museum's exhibit shop. Did you know that anybody could be a scientist? Scientists make observations, ask questions, and explore the world around them. Check this out. This is oobleck, and it's something that you can even make at home. All you need is a little bit of cornstarch, some water, and to make it your favorite color, you can even add a little bit of food coloring. Oobleck is a non-Newtonian substance, and that means it can go back and forth between a solid and a liquid. If I apply force to oobleck, it's a solid. But when I let it move around in its container, it takes a liquid form. Now, check this out. I'm gonna add oobleck to our speaker over here, and we're gonna watch oobleck dance. Although we can't see those sound waves, they apply a force to the oobleck and make it solid. Again, oobleck is called a non-Newtonian substance, meaning that it can go back and forth between two states of matter. Thanks for that demo, Miranda. I quite enjoy being a scientist myself, studying the world around me. So we're now in the Discovery's Inside Out Gallery, where you can learn all about human anatomy. It's such a wonderful exhibit. Matt, we've been at it for a bit now, and I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> yeah. It looks like he hasn't eaten in a little while either. But yes, Cassie, I'm kind of hungry. Hungry for more science. So what does a skeleton say before it eats, Cassie? Oh, another joke? Yeah, it says bone appetite. <laughs> 
that's that's all he's got. That's all you got, really? What? Not enough body to the joke for you? Oh, make it end. Let's go to Michael Tragash with Yelp and see what he has cooking with local chef and restaurateur, Chef Aaron. Thanks, Matt. We're outside of food and drink here in the heart of Midtown on St. Lawrence Avenue, one of the hottest restaurants to open since this pandemic started. Thanks to your Yelp reviews and social media, this place hit the scene in a big way. Well, that and owner Aaron Foster takes pizza and science very seriously. We're about to go inside and find out what that means, so follow me. I almost forgot. No customers allowed inside. I love you, but also no. We're gonna have to do this interview a little differently. Hey, thanks so much for doing this. I knew you were the only person that was 100% safe to be this close to. Well, thanks for having me, Aaron. I certainly feel the same about you. But, um, what's up with your cameraman? Is he safe? Yeah, he's safe. Now talk to me about the science of pizza. Uh, well, it's delicious. Right, but what's something that most people don't know about pizza? Okay, so you know how generally you think the fresher food is, the better it's gonna taste? Pizza's totally the opposite. That is fascinating. Tell me more about that. Sure, how much time do you have? About 60 seconds. Seriously? Well, no, like 55 now. Okay, here's the deal. Pizza dough is made with yeast, which is a microorganism. And when you activate it in the pizza dough, it starts reproducing and consuming all the complex sugar in the flour. That gives off carbon dioxide, and that's what makes the dough rise. I'm with you so far. Great, stop interrupting. So while the yeast is consuming the sugar and giving off carbon dioxide, it's also producing flavor. Now that takes about eight to 10 hours at room temperature. But here's the catch. There's like 300 other chemical processes happening within the dough at the same time, but they take a lot longer than those eight to 10 hours. So we refrigerate the dough to slow down the yeast. And when you time it right, they all hit their perfect part at the same time and you got a super yummy pizza. So what happens if you don't wait long enough? Well, have you ever had a couple slices of pizza and it feels like they just sit in your gut all day and they're really hard to digest? Well, as you know, I eat all my pizza here, so that's never happened. Good point. But when that does happen, what it means is the dough is probably not properly aged. And he didn't give all those chemical processes enough time to break down the gluten and transform it into something that's very light, very delicious, and much easier to digest. Well, science certainly is amazing, isn't it? How long do you age your dough? We do a minimum of 72 hours. It takes you three days to make a pizza? It does take a long time, but I think it's worth it. You wanna give it a try? Hmm. Oh, that is really good. Well, back to you, Michael. Thanks, Aaron and Aaron. You know, three days to make a pizza, you'll have to be the judge. But science and countless Yelp reviews will tell you this is one super yummy, delicious pie. Yelp has been a proud partner of the Discovery for more than seven years. And we are so grateful for everything that they bring to this community for kids and adults alike. During this science cast and all year round, now is your chance to show your support of the Discovery. They are a one incredible community resource, and we are thankful for everything they do for us. Well, I'm having so much fun with you, Matt. I hope everyone at home is enjoying our science cast as well. So as an added thank you for all of your great support, we're gonna send it back to the one, the only, the incredible, the amazing, Justin Impossible. He's gonna share some of the science behind a trick so you can do it right at home yourself. Justin. Hey, thanks, Cassie. I'm here at the Discovery in front of the Cloud Climber with an amazing science magic trick that you can do at home. And I need something, and unlike most people, I keep a banana in my pocket. And this brings me to the magical banana judo shop. Be careful. Now you're probably thinking I didn't do anything, but if we open up this banana, you'll notice the banana is cut into three, one, two, and three equal pieces. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the magical banana judo chop. And the best part, it's good, full of potassium. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna teach that to you right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the magical banana judo chop. Now kiddos, if you do this magic trick, make sure you get your parents' help because you are using a needle. And all you're gonna do, and you can do this, you could cut it here, you could cut it here, you could cut it lengthwise, whatever you'd like to do. But all I do is I take the needle, I push it in one side just like so, I don't go through all the way, and then all I do is I go back and forth, just like that. 
I just go back and forth, and I'm gonna cut it right there. And this one I'm actually gonna do in three places. I'm gonna do the magical banana chop in three different locations. There's one, there's two, and then three. You notice that I used a banana that has a couple, uh, you know, just bad spots on it, and that actually hides the, the needle location. Really, you're just making your audience believe that you actually cut it. Hiya! 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 When you open it, you'll notice that the banana is actually cut in one, two, and three locations perfectly. One of my favorites, this is the magical banana judo chop coming to you from the Discovery Museum. We'll see you soon. Thank you for that performance, Justin, and of course, the continued support you always give the Discovery. But speaking of bananas, you wanna hear a joke about potassium? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face because potassium is the letter K on the periodic table. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Well, Science Cast is starting to wind down, but we do have some more science to explore. And remember, all the ways to give and donate can be found on our website, nvdm.org. Well, we've got our final science demo. Kevin, the ball's in your court. Thanks, Cassie. I'll take it from here. All right, guys, I'm putting my PPE for this one, my personal protective equipment. Today we're talking about the element that is the most abundant in our atmosphere, which is nitrogen. Here I have some liquid nitrogen. This thing is about negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Really cold or about negative 190 degrees Celsius. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this up with liquid nitrogen, we're gonna cap it, it's gonna create a pressure buildup and we're gonna see what happens. All right, so here we go. I got my liquid nitrogen. Wow, that was wild. Thank you for that science demonstration, Kevin. Remember folks, you can come into the Discovery and experience live science demonstrations every day. You have such great science educators here at the museum. You have to get down here and check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, though, we also wanna thank you for joining us and helping support science and the Discovery Museum this evening. We also wanna thank our sponsors for their continued support to make this televised event possible. We are so proud to be part of this community. Every single dollar raised tonight stays right here in Northern Nevada and directly benefits the discovery. Well, everybody, we're wrapping up our evening with you. For myself, Cassie Wilson, and everyone here at The Discovery, we thank you for joining us this evening to support science. If you haven't donated yet, please consider a gift by texting The Discovery to 44321, go to nvdm.org, or give us a call at 786-1000. We hope to see you at The Discovery soon. And we would like to leave you this evening with a very special performance from Reno's very own Whitney Meyer. Have a wonderful night and thank you for your continued support of the discovery and of science. Coloring outside the borders, side by side and hand in hand. Coming closer, moving forward, a language we all understand. We got life. We won't let go everywhere and everyone. Let it show, let it show. Coming in, we're coming out. Everywhere and everyone. Don't give up, don't give up. Maybe we could see ourselves in one another. Cause we're all in this together in the end. Maybe we could find the answers in each other and the world can learn to love again there's a light inside that shows us where we're going when the road is rough you've always got a friend i believe we're almost home and hope is growing and the world can learn to love again and the world can learn to love again let's make the most of this moment we've got so much more to give 
fingertips We got life, we won't let go Everywhere and everyone Let it show, let it show Coming in, we're coming oh Everywhere and everyone Don't give up, don't give up Maybe we could see ourselves in one another Cause we're all in this together in the end Maybe we could find the answers in each other And the world can learn to love again There's a light inside the shores of where we're going When the road is rough you've always got a friend I believe we're all